Let's talk about the basics of squares and square roots. Let's imagine we have some x and that x is equal to 1. What would it mean to square that? Well, squaring is just taking the number, multiplying it by itself, and seeing what you get. So in this case, if I wanted to know x squared, it's the same thing as 1 times 1, which is just 1. How about 2? Well, that's the same thing as if I square that 2 times 2, which is 4. And I could do 3, and that would be 9. And I could do 4 squared, and that would be 16. And, you know, obviously I can pick any number I want, but really it's good to know the first integers, the first 12 integers, whoops, up to 12. Because 12 squared is 144. Now those are just good to know. Obviously you've got a calculator, you can always calculate them that way, but it's just a good thing to have handy for quick computation. We have also could square negative numbers. So if we had negative 1, I would say, well, negative 1 squared is just negative 1 times negative 1, and that's 1. I could do negative 2, and negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and negative 3 would be 9, and so on. Notice the key here is when I square a negative, it becomes positive. Very important. The SAT likes to try to trick you with that in certain ways. We could also go in the opposite direction with a thing called square root. So square root is, if you're given some number x, what is the number such that I multiply it by itself and gives me that number x? So it's kind of you know, hard to say in those words, a bit confusing, but I think it's easier just to use examples. So 1, what is the number? such that when I multiply one, or when I multiply that number by itself, I get one. Well, it's one, right? The square root of one is one. How about uh, 49? What is the number such that when I square it, I get 49? Well, it would be seven. And I could do 81. What is the number such that when I square that number, I get 81? Well, it's nine, right? So it's the opposite, or as they call it, inverse operation of squaring, right? To go from uh, x uh, squared back to x, we could square root it, right? So the square root of x squared is just equal to x. Uh, you also can see that the square root of x times the square root of x would also be equal to x, right? Same kind of deal. Uh, we'll talk more about radicals in a later video. If, for instance, I had the square root of 16 squared, well, um, the square and the square root kind of just cancel and we're left with the regular number, so it's just 16, right? That's just what we mean by inverse operations. Uh, you can do you can square something and then square root it and you're back to where you started. The SAT likes to ask questions about squaring fractions because things get very strange when we square fractions. Notice on these examples when we squared integers, um, we just got numbers bigger than the other numbers because that made sense. Things get a little bit weird when you square. So what if I square a half? If I square a half, I get one quarter and notice that one quarter is less than a half. Very strange. Normally, you know, if I square 2, I get 4, and 4 is bigger than 2. The opposite occurs here. The thing I get when I square a fraction is actually smaller, so keep that in mind. Remember, you don't, as I say here, you can memorize the rules and or just reproduce them on demand. So if you forget what happens to a, to a fraction when you square it or square root it, just pick one and see what happens, and then you know the rule. Um, what happens, though, if I square, say, negative 1 half? Well, again, I get 1 quarter, but notice because this is positive and this original guy was negative, one quarter is actually greater than negative a half, simply because the negative half is negative. So that's another little wrinkle where things get a bit weird. You're going to see questions, we'll see these in the Math Tactic series, where you have to order numbers when you square them, and it's all about knowing these relationships. We also could cube things. Now, they don't really go much beyond cubing. I did include it here just to be thorough, but really cubing is as far as we're really going to go on the SAT most of the time. But again, what would happen if I cubed one-eighth? or sorry, if I cubed one half, well, I would get one eighth. And again, one eighth is smaller than one half, so that seems to be no problem. What happens, though, if I cube negative a half? Well, I get negative one eighth. Again, it's negative, but it's actually bigger because it's a smaller, right? It's a smaller negative fraction. So this is where things get very strange. Again, memorizing them, you can do that. I just like, you know, picking a number, squaring it or cubing it or whatever and seeing what happens. That's the best way to remember these. One thing I should add on here before I finish the video is what happens when you cube integers. So obviously if I cube 2, I'm just going to get 2 times 2 times 2 and that's the same thing as 8. What happens if I cube negative 2? Well if I cube negative 2, that's the same thing as negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And notice here, again we get 8, but it's negative because this negative cancels this one but then we're left with one negative. So in this case, two, negative two cubed is actually uh, smaller than, or bigger than, excuse me, the answer. Uh, that got all screwed up. Negative two cubed is uh, smaller than negative two. 
right? Negative two is bigger than its cube because the cube becomes more negative. So again, don't have to memorize the rules, just reproduce them when you need them.